How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is PS Ready, my channel all about PlayStation. It's the weekend. I hope you're having a ton of fun playing a bunch of video games and hopefully getting outside. It's really nice here in Michigan. It's like 70 degrees. So if you've got nice weather, go take advantage of it. As far as what I'm playing this weekend, I'm still making my way through Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm also about halfway through the original Final Fantasy VII, which is phenomenal. If you've never played it, try it out. And I'm not gonna lie, the new stuff they added for free to Destiny 2 seems pretty cool. So I'm gonna go check that out. I know, shame, shame, shame. We're not allowed to like Destiny 2 here, but you know, I played a lot of that game and I want to encourage them to keep doing good things with it instead of bad things. It's owned by Sony now. I have to at least try it out. In today's video, I've got three great topics for you. The first one is that there's an incredible concept for a handheld PS1 that actually works. Gamers are demanding more from PlayStation and here's why they're right. And finally, is PlayStation's model for the PS5 broken? We're going to discuss that and more. This video is sponsored by Flexispot. I've been wanting to get a standing desk for a while now, so I was super excited when Flexispot reached out to sponsor this video with their E6 standing desk. It's super stable, so it can withstand impacts of over 325 pounds, which is over 20,000 times its weight. It's also super durable, and Flexispot is so confident that they provide a 15 year warranty. I put my laptop, my monitor, my soundbar, the riser for my monitor and soundbar, my audio recording equipment, my Thunderbolt 4 dock, my mouse dock, my headphone stand, my lamp, and my mouse and mouse pad on this desk and it is not buckling at all in the slightest. The carpet in my basement isn't glued down so I can't use these wheels right now but when I upgrade to a wood floor in the next couple of months I will be putting these on because they're super cool looking and smooth. My favorite feature is that it has multiple memory settings so you can do a quick access button for sitting or standing mode and you can also save two more on top of that. And once you tap a button on the little control module it lights up so even if you're playing games in the dark you'll be able to raise or lower your desk. Once again huge shout out to Flexispot for sponsoring this video. Let's jump into this first news story here, which is this handheld PS1, because it's honestly, it's like one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So this was created by Hiro Sato, who goes by the Game Boy Doctor on Instagram. And basically what he did is he took this very obscure and rare retro PS1 controller that was called the roulette controller. And you can see why, because it has a roulette wheel on the top above the actual buttons, but it does look like a perfect casing for a handheld. And he packed in all of the necessary internals to, I think, emulate PlayStation 1 games. In the video he shared on Instagram, he shows a few games running like Mega Man 8 and Resident Evil Survivor. Mega Man 8 is awesome. It's like one of the coolest games I played as a kid. I never really played Resident Evil Survivor, but I'm pretty sure that was the one that was like a first person shooter. It's not that great. Regardless, this is a really cool concept because it's a small PlayStation 1 that retains the look and feel of the original PlayStation. You know, like that milky white plastic, the dark gray buttons, the nice pastel colors on the circle cross square and triangle buttons everything that gives it that like 90s nostalgic look and feel is included in this device and the screen even though it was replacing like a roulette wheel that was at the top of the controller it actually looks really good and like it was the original intention for this controller in the first place so since you can't really fit a disk drive into something like this it runs off of emulation so he included an sd card he included triggers on the back basically everything you need to play playstation 1 games is included in this handheld and honestly I would be so stoked if this guy figured out a way to 3D print this with the actual right colors and everything and get all the right buttons and all that and actually start selling it because I like handheld gaming. I like retro handhelds. I was able to get uh, the red analog pocket last year in the like two seconds that they were available and being able to play retro games on a nice handheld like that is still just a really cool thing. Right now, my main device for doing all of this is the Steam Deck. Uh, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII like I mentioned at the beginning of the video on my phone at the gym and it sucks, right? Like playing on a touchscreen is terrible. It has buttons overlaying the game on your phone and like the time is still showing on the left side. It's like terrible presentation. And the weird thing is when you're in a battle, even though there's like a full D-pad set up over the screen, it, it still activates the commands on the screen, like the attack, magic, uh, steel, and um, all the other ones like item and everything like that. So if you hit them by accident, it changes the order of your battle, which can actually get you killed. Uh, if I had just waited a little bit longer, Longer. I'm so pissed I didn't know about this. Apple's opening up the App Store to allow emulators. So if I could get RetroArch on my phone, I could just emulate Final Fantasy VII and then I could come home and play it on my Steam Deck. But like, that's here nor there. I just think it would be really cool to have a little PlayStation handheld like this, either officially made by Sony or made by the Game Boy Doctor over on Instagram. If someone wants to create this, I will buy it. I would love to have one of these in my collection. Anyway, that brings us to the second news story here, which is that gamers are demanding more from Sony and they are right. So this one 
one's coming from one of my favorite websites on the internet, bar none, Push Square. I've been reading them since I really got into the whole like writing about games thing back in college. They're like the best PlayStation fan blog out there. I like their content because it's not guides focused and it's not like clickbait news focused. It's more like reading cool opinion pieces and articles that are being written by actual hardcore PlayStation fans. And if you couldn't tell, they're like a big inspiration for my channel. So in their latest poll, which got 6,056 responses, they asked how important 60 FPS was to PlayStation gamers. And again, keep in mind, this is like the most hardcore group of PlayStation gamers out there. It doesn't necessarily represent the like uh, casual community, but I'd argue that PlayStation doesn't really have a casual community. Like if you're a hardcore gamer, you should be buying a PlayStation 5 if you have any other options out there, whether it's the Series X or the Nintendo Switch. So coming in at the bottom with 5% of the polled users is I don't give a damn about frame rates. Then we've got I don't really care as long as the frame rate is consistent at 14%. I prefer 60 FPS, but 30 isn't a deal breaker. Got 19%. 60 FPS should always be the target on PS5 is 27% and all PS5 games should hit 60 FPS. There's no excuse is at 36%. If I'm being honest, in my heart of hearts, I kind of am more in line with the second option, like the second place winner, which was that 60 FPS should always be the target because, well, I don't know how to develop a game. I understand that a lot of games are rushed to market these days. I bitch about it constantly here on the channel, but sometimes with like a visually demanding game that really is just trying to go all out and look as good as possible, there are cases where 30 FPS is good if it's a locked 30 FPS. Like the best example I have is Final Fantasy 16. You do get a performance mode it's not great we've talked about it here on the channel ad nauseum but the 30 fps mode is phenomenal it's a lock 30 it's frame paced perfectly and i had no problem playing that game at 30 fps but then there's games that kind of feel like they were rushed to market a little bit faster than they should have been like dragon's dogma 2 which came out with an unlocked frame rate that ran between 20 and 45 fps and it was terribly frame paced and like when you would go into cities it would drop all the way down into the teens so they added in a frame rate cap of 30 and even that doesn't really work all the time like it keeps it at 30 but it's a bad frame lock because it doesn't pace the frames correctly so even if you're panning the camera you'll see a lot of juddering and frames dropping and the same goes for rise of the ronin the frame rate mode is all over the place it almost never runs at 60 fps but if you use the graphics mode that locks it at 30 once again it's super poorly frame paced so you see a lot of jittering so you know what actually no i think the first place was right 60 fps should be the bar none benchmark for all games on the playstation 5 because every game I just listed had it be the target, but they didn't hit the target. And because they didn't lock it correctly at 30, we can't trust them to actually do that in the future. So yeah, they should just make every game run at 60 FPS. Now, of course, when you go on Twitter or Reddit or any other PlayStation forum, you get the like kumbaya type of people who are like, oh, who cares about frame rate? You can't see anything above 30 FPS anyway. They're objectively wrong. Like when you see a game running between 30 and 60 FPS and the frame rates all over, the place even with variable refresh rate all that does is smooth out the stuttering it doesn't do anything about the frame drops you still notice the frames dropping and if you're playing a game like rise of the ronin which is a souls light game where a timing really matters because there's an insane parry mechanic where instead of it just being a parry that allows you to follow up attack it actually causes damage to the other player that you're fighting against you want that at the very least to be a consistent frame rate which again you can't get in that game so yeah they should have held on to the game longer until it was actually done and ran at 60 FPS because when you get to certain parts of the map, it does run at 60, it has the capability. So I just don't really believe that if they had a little bit more time to cook on that game, it wouldn't be able to play at 60 FPS locked, right? And then how many games are there these days that don't run at a locked 60? And then they come out, you wait a year, it gets patches, it gets DLC, suddenly you come back for the ultimate edition of that game and lo and behold, it's running at a near perfect lock of 60 FPS. The best example of that is Control. That game ran like when it came out on the ps4 pro it was like a kind of locked 30 fps you couldn't get 60 out of like a really good pc but then suddenly a year later when the ultimate edition of control came out you got a 60 fps lock on ps5 and it looks absolutely phenomenal so when i hear excuses from fans developers executives over at these companies that are like most people don't see it i personally don't give a shit you started this entire generation releasing games that ran at a locked 60 fps you set a standard on your
console so you should live up to that standard and i shouldn't have to convince you to do it you should want your games to run at 60 fps at an acceptable resolution that's the whole point of having a powerful console like the playstation 5 right and i'm going to point out that i'm not really coming at sony here i think they've done a really good job with games like horizon forbidden west gran turismo 7 god of war ragnarok returnal uh demon souls the list goes on and on of playstation exclusives we've got in this generation that run at a hard lock 60 fps even even if you're talking about games that aren't remasters. The only one that really sticks out to me is Final Fantasy 16, and that's not a first party exclusive. And I'm pretty sure if you go back to videos from a year or so ago, I was saying we gotta stop buying games at launch that aren't performing correctly, but clearly people are doing that because game sales are down overall. And look at the way the industry is. They're still not listening. They're still releasing games with unlocked frame rates. And even the best developers when it comes to frame rates like Capcom, who had a nearly perfect track record over the past few years, even there's susceptible to releasing games that don't have the correct frame rate limiters or run at the correct frame rate that we want as gamers. Like we're the ones shelling out the money. They should be catering to us at all times, right? I totally agree with what people are saying on this poll on Push Square. I'm glad that people are seeing the light and expecting 60 FPS out of games. And I'm glad Sony seems to understand that unlike Microsoft, who's got the most powerful console ever, but their two biggest games, Starfield and Hellblade 2 run at 30 FPS, which to me is a fucking joke. Sorry, sorry guys. I have to be a little bit of a fanboy there. I think it's a joke that Starfield runs at 30 FPS on Xbox and the same goes for Hellblade 2. Then third on the list, I get to argue more with other people talking about PlayStation when it seems like they don't know anything about their models. So Michael Pachter, who's been around in the industry for a long time, he's like an analyst who loves to say wild shit all the time, is back with another extremely hot take that's very easy to argue with. He's got a podcast called The Pachter Factor and what he said is the Nintendo model and the Sony model of proprietary titles on proprietary platforms is the wrong model it's a broken model supporting your content by managing the distribution on your platform is like a movie studio owning a chain of movie theaters and the only way you can watch their movie is in their theaters so if you guys didn't know i'm really always interested in the business of games like how they make money how budgets shake out and that really comes from my movie channel which is called jimmy champagne i talk about horror movies i love talking about budgets and profits and everything like that over on that channel and it's really just funny to hear him say that playstation having exclusive games that only run on their hardware is like movie studios owning a movie theater and only showing their movies they would totally do that if they could but it's been illegal for a very long time it was a famous movie case where paramount went against the u.s government and lost they wanted to make their own movie theaters that showed their own movies and now because of that disney amazon and everyone else can't own their own movie theaters because it's an antitrust issue so if they could they totally would like if amazon could have a movie theater that played full seasons of the boys the new roadhouse which absolutely and sucks and everything else they make like the fallout tv show i guarantee you they would and if disney could have movie theaters that played marvel movies and star wars all day long they 100 would you know why because they can control the experience they can create a good atmosphere they can bring food they can bring drinks they can make sure that you're getting your movie screened on the best screen possible all the variables that come with screening movies on theaters they don't own are totally eliminated from the market now do i think that's good or bad honestly i don't really care i like the way playstation and nintendo have things set up i have no problem with owning a playstation 5 and a nintendo switch so the only console that i own that really gave me buyer's remorse is the xbox series x and the reason for that is unfinished games that rush to market and don't really perform the way i would want them to on quote unquote the world's most powerful console the only caveat to me thinking the model isn't broken is the fact that hardware sales have kind of come down as time has gone on the biggest amount of hardware sales that have ever happened in the console industry was playstation 2 that was really juiced by the fact that it was a dvd player that was extremely cheap like dvd players were around the same price if not more expensive than the playstation 2 at the time so it really just made sense to get a playstation 2 instead of a dvd player because you could play ps2 games and ps2 games were really good the playstation 2 hit 160 million units and that's never been broken and one way people read this is they say that it's the same people buying consoles over and over again that's like theoretically impossible i guarantee you there are younger people who are buying consoles that kind of bring the numbers to exactly where they were before but there's not as many young people as these companies would like. So that's why Xbox is merging and acquiring Activision. They really wanted King. They want to get their games on phones. That's why Sony's putting their games on PC. Nintendo tried mobile games. It didn't really work out that well for them. So they took a different route and they're putting their characters in movies for younger people like the Mario movie, which is one of the biggest movies ever. It made billions of dollars, which is crazy. They're putting their characters in theme parks like Universal Studios. So they're all kind of taking their own approach to getting their characters out there more. And I would 
would guess that Nintendo's model of keeping their games exclusive to a cheap console like the Nintendo Switch or the Switch 2 and then getting the word out there to younger people with movies like the Mario movie or this upcoming Zelda movie that by the way they're working on with Sony will result in younger people wanting to buy a Nintendo Switch to play Mario Wonder, right? Like it just makes a lot of sense. You got to meet them where they're at and they're at the movies watching the Mario movie. So talk to them there, get them excited about Mario. And then when they're at Target and they see the Nintendo Switch with Mario Wonder, they're going to beg their mom for it. You just got to think different. I don't know why analysts are so ride or die for the Game Pass model. It's like it totally ruined the movie industry. It's completely ruined the TV industry. So I don't see why it would be any different over on video games. And every naysayer effect that was predicted to happen has come true with Xbox. They're not giving out money to all these indie developers. They're making their games need early access. They're doing season passes. They're doing all the things that I believe are causing problems in the gaming industry and are contributing to people buying less hardware and buying less games. That's my TED talk. Thanks for coming. I don't think Sony's model is broken and I am sure you don't either if you're watching this channel. Let me know what you think though down in the comments below. Again, have a great weekend. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Shape on.